Hello kids and others who are watching. Last week we made a sponge, actually Paul made a sponge and uh, I promised that we will come back and show you what to do with the sponge. I mean there's a multitude of things you can do with it but we want to show you a couple of very simple ideas that will please your parents and yourself hopefully. So take it away Paul because you're the star of the show today. I'm just watching. Okay, so no right. worries. Now last week we uh, failed to give you the proper recipe for the sponge cake um, so it <laughs> that was, was really uh, that was really silly <laughs> give, give, give the rest so 200 grams of flour 50 grams of corn flour sifted then uh, we had uh, six eggs and six egg yolks and 250 grams of caster sugar which we whisked up into that we poured 250 grams of melted unsalted butter um, and we folded the, the, um, all the ingredients together and here's our sponge cake. So with this one, I'm just going to turn it out of the tray. And the easiest way to do that is to get another tray. And um, take the paper off. Like so. so just going to cut out a couple of little pieces. You can use a knife for that. You don't have yeah, to you can cut a square cutter. You can do you it. You can cut it to any shape you like. So I'm going to make a trifle with this one. We're just going to save those for later. What we're going to do next? What are you going to do with all these lovely little bits? With these, mm. you can you can use you can use those for making trifle. You yeah. can also put them in the oven, let them dry a little bit. Yeah. Make them nice and crunchy, and then you can crumble them onto top. Of yeah. So or never or waste anything. Like. No, no. Or if you are a gut like me, you just eat them. <laughs> Off okay. we go. We'll pop that up there. So, onto the um, custard or creme patissiere, as it's known. For this, I've got 625 mils of milk. Just go straight in the pot. 125 grams of sugar or half a cup. A little whisk there. Then, in a separate bowl, I've got 125 mils of milk. And in here, I have 38 grams of corn flour and 38 grams of custard powder. Now, the custard powder is, you can use bird's custard powder. And the reason I, I like to use custard powder is because the bird's has uh, a natural uh, coloring called anisotope, which is made from little seeds. Um, and it gives you that nice yellow color. I'm also gonna add some eggs. So you, miss, you mix this up. You gotta make sure you get all of the lumps out. But um, while we're waiting for the eggs, we're just gonna pop this onto the stove. Onto a medium heat. Like and all the lumps have come out of here, so I'm gonna pop a couple of eggs in. Into there. So you're not worried about buying a little bit of custard powder? Eh? No, well, it's corn flour, as I said, with a natural colouring in it. So it's not it's not a, a premix, it's just corn flour with a, with a little bit of colouring and a pinch of salt. And I just like it because of the colour and right. it looks like custard. Whereas you can make it without the custard powder and the eggs, but then you get a very pale custard, and yeah. I find that's not very appetizing. Well, I'm a yolk, I, I'm an egg person, but never mind. This this actually makes it somewhat easier. And um, the reason we're doing the custard this way is it's a very thick custard that you can uh, you can pipe, and it'll hold its shape. Whereas a normal custard is quite thin, and it tends to run all over the place. So if you want to make a cake and you want to pipe the custard on. Uh, creme patissiere is the way to go. So. Now we just wait for this to come to the boil. It shouldn't take too long. 
So, straight in with this. Oh, I'll give it another whisk. Straight in. And there's no, no danger of eggs curdling here, Paul. No, because it's got the corn flour in there. So, yeah. Um, you don't really... If it was just eggs, then... Um, <laughs> yeah. It would curdle. And it looks a little bit lumpy to start off with, but that's not a big deal. And obviously, you use stainless steel when you do this Absolutely. job. Absolutely. You won't be using a, 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 a aluminium or other, especially, you know, when you're whisking something, yeah. uh, stainless steel doesn't release anything. It's, it's safe. So always use a stainless steel top. Preferably an open one like this, so you can actually see what you're doing. And, and the custard is spreading, rather than having it in a tall pot. It will make it a bit awkward. So, now that it's come to the boil, and you'll see it bubbling, you can stop stirring it really quickly, and just gently, you just want to keep it moving, uh, so it doesn't stick to the bottom of the pot. And basically that's it. I'm just going to keep doing this for the next five to 10 minutes, until the custard um, loses that uh, flavoury taste. So at the moment you'll still get At the moment it's not, it's corn flour. It's not immediately noticeable, but it is safe, it's better to cook it right through as Paul is saying. And when you taste it hot, of course it seems a little bit sugary, but when the custard goes cold, it's another flavor again. So, of course, you can moderate the sugar as you like, uh, but th this, this works, because as it goes cold, actually quite cold, into the, the, the with the sponge, you, you will notice how sweet it is. Okay, so that's all good now. I'm gonna put it straight into a container. Then we're going to put some plastic wrap on top. The reason being is if you don't put plastic wrap on, it creates a crust, which you don't want. And that can go into the fridge. Um, I usually leave it overnight. Uh, you can do it for four hours, but it has to be very cold and it will get quite firm, which um, I'll show you. With this one, which I prepared earlier, yesterday to be, to be exact. So you can see that's quite it's quite firm. That needs to be blended, which um, I'm going to measure 400 grams of this. The reason I'm measuring it is because. Um, we're going to add some cream to it to lighten it up. So I'm going to use some plain to make a sponge cake with uh, poached pears. And I'm going to lighten up the rest of it with some cream so that we can make a nice trifle. So, so actually I'm going to put 600 grams in so we can use... So you can do it all at once, yeah. yeah. Then we're going to blend it up. You can use any type of uh, mixer to do this. You're going to have to have... You don't need a thermomix. You don't, no. <laughs> no. I just... You just, just, um... You can use one of these, can't you? With a... You can use that with a whisk, yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people have this... You know, I've been in too many houses here in Madura, and um, people have thermal mixes. But any old thing will do just to whisk it up. You give it a good whip though, don't you? Yeah, you want it, you want it to be very smooth. Yeah. So it's very resilient, there's no problem. Just beat the bejeez out of it. So I'm going to measure 400 grams of that. And previously I whipped 200 grams of cream. Um, a fairly stiff whip. So... If ever you're making this custard, you just use half the amount of whipped cream to the amount of custard. So, 400 grams of custard, 200 cream. 
can how, see how how lovely and smooth it but, is. But it holds its shape. So that means you can pipe it and you can put it in a cake without it oozing out all the Well, your beautiful colour is gone anyway, Paul. You wanted a custard with this colour, one. now you mix it with cream and the yes, colour goes. Yes, but I'm going to use the other custard for the one with the pears. Oh, right. So ah. this one I'm going to use with some colourful fruit, so it doesn't oh, really right. matter. So it really doesn't matter. <laughs> so, and the sweetness has really decreased because of the addition of cream. So you've got to balance that all the time. Now I'm going to put that into a piping bag with a little plain nozzle. And this one's going to be for the trifle. And that'll do. I've got a nice little glass there. I'm going to use strawberries and blueberries for this. And um, to start it off, what we're going to do is we're just going to Put the strawberries around the glass. You can make a bigger one, can't you? Oh yeah, you can. You can expand this as big as. Yeah, you can make bigger quantities, and you can make a nice bowl of it. But it's probably just, is more fun. I'm than... just showing you a small one because it's quicker to make. And, yeah. Um, they look really nice. So I'm gonna pipe a little bit of custard there, just enough to cover the strawberries, and then. Some of the sponge that we um, cut out before, I'm going to put it in upside down. Why is that? Because I saved some liquid from poaching your pears. So how do you and, poach um, the pears? You so poach the, pears, the whole or you poach them in pieces? No, I, um, I peeled the pears and I quartered them. Right. I put them into a pan with um, a litre of water and 500 grams of sugar and then just gently boil them until they were very nice and soft. So these are Burbos pears, so they're the, the brown ones. The brown ones long. that are everywhere yeah. now. Um, but that's, the pears are for um, the cake. Right. But I use the poaching liquid to soak into the sponge. Mm. So this this is for your kids, no alcohol, but if you're doing it for adults, uh, you can actually yeah. put a little bit of Grand Manier or, or something. Triple sec, coin churro. Yeah, um, something that takes your fancy. Yeah. So a few blueberries on top. There's now an orange a liqueur made in, um, in Melbourne with mature oranges called Marionette. It's just absolutely delicious. It's like a curacao with a lovely scent of Majora oranges. Addictive. But I'm not here talking about alcohol to you kiddos. I go to jail. And that's that easy. And as they said, is. you can you know you can increase that. Use a bowl, well. a glass bowl or a beautiful bowl and and just go, go wild with that, it'll be fantastic. Thank you, Paul. Next, we're gonna go back to the square sponge this time. Once again, I've put it, there's two sides, so that's the top, that's the bottom. If you try to put the syrup into that, it's not gonna soak in. It'll run. So, and it doesn't matter if you get a little bit on the plate either. Um, but it's nice to do this because the sponge does tend to be a little bit dry. And this gives it um, a nice added um, dimension. So I've got um, a beautifully poached pear. Now for this one, I'm going to use the other custard. You can put it in a piping bag and pipe it on. Um, it's going to be a little bit messy, this one. Yeah, that's my fault. <laughs> I stop you from putting it in a piping bag. I'm always looking for ways to simplify things. It's still going to be very, very tasty. Another piece on top. Yeah, turn it the other way so they see the nice bit. A little bit more sugar syrup. And a nice little blob on top, so we're not going to be too fussy with this. 
basically kiddos it's just a, a sponge sandwich with pears and custard it doesn't have to look elegant and pretty and beautiful you've already done that which has got all the, the, the all the you know the presentation this is just yummy yummy stuff you know it's simple and it's uh and yeah there are many steps involved poaching pears you know making the custard and making the sponge if we go back to last week but essentially this is very very at the end of the day if you do it you know a few times you get the hang of it and you do it with your right shot enjoy it thank you paul okay so we're gonna have a taste just a little one thank you buon appetito mm. it really is delicate trust me make it well done thanks guys